Hello everybody, I'm Heather with GetFitGoFigure.com. Jenny Baker will be joining us this evening. We are doing this from the public Get Fit Go Figure page tonight instead of our GF2 contest prep forum. Uh, so there might be a few things Jenny and I need to work out as we go. But in the interim, I wanted to share a few things with you. Discovered, I discovered these uh, birthday cake quest bars. It's just a wrapper because I already ate it. These are pretty darn tasty. Now, I'm not a big fan of things with a lot of erythritol because they upset my stomach. Uh, but if you're trying to fit your macros and you need some protein on the run, these are really easy to get to fit your macros because they're higher protein than most bars, which is 20 grams. And hey, Joan, what's up, girl? And uh, six grams of fat or so, so that makes it easy to fit in your macros if you're following a macros plan. And then carbohydrates range, this one's 24, but they have a lot of fiber, which is 14 grams of fiber. So I don't know if the light will allow you to see that, but regardless, super good. Some other bars that are my super favorite. Oh shoot, Jenny's having problems. Can they let my girls be at it? Uh, hold on, Jenny Baker. Hey, I have Joan as a viewer. Can you view Jenny and then I see if I can add you like we do on the other, but we, whatever we use. All right, here we go. Anyway, Power Crunch bars, super yummy. I love, they're kind of like a Kit Kat to me because I love the wafery chocolatey business. Uh, vanilla or like the peanut butter cream are my favorite. This lighting is crazy. Yeah, so these are super good. They also have erythritol in them. Um, so if you just have too many in a day, you better watch out because your digestive, tra digestive tract is probably going to be hurting. But they're a pretty nice option as far as a higher protein bar without a whole buttload of carbs. And, oop, let me see if I can get Jenny on here. Last one, which I've never really ever had or heard until Jenny and I were at a uh, the Michigan State Championships. Hey, Jenny. I was just going to introduce a, a new bar that I learned about when we were at the Michigan State Championships. So Lee Anderson is a promoter of that show with NattyRevolution.com and Jenny and I were there handing out awards and being super awesome and amazing in our little black dresses. Uh, and in, in the competitors' bags, Leaf always puts in and gets the most amazing sponsors to put in like full bars and full supplements and all this stuff. And a whole bunch of the bars that went in there were these outright bars. I don't know if you've ever had these before, but these I thought were super amazing. And they have no erythritol in them, which for me is really great, but a little bit higher fat. So about 13 grams of fat, 26 carbs, and then 15 in protein. So still pretty good. But if you are prepping for a show and you happen to be really low fat um, or even low carbs, sometimes getting a bar in can be really challenging. So those are my three faves right now. These Outright Bars, Power Crunch Bar, and the Quest Birthday Cake Bar, and then the Quest Donut with Sprinkles Bar, because they're like coated with a coating, and they're super yummy. How's it going, Jenny? Fine. Nothing really exciting awesome. going on right now. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Hey, Leaf. How's it going? We were just plugging your show there, and how amazing you are putting in all those amazing outright bars that I now mm. eat all the time. <laughs> so, okay, let's get rolling. Today we're gonna talk about training splits. Like what even is a training split? I don't even know. Uh, and what training split might be right for you because there are so many variations and so many people get very confused on what to do and then they're scrolling Instagram and looking at their favorite figure competitor and they do this and this other person does this and they don't know where to start. So we're gonna cover training splits for people that are general fitness and even just starting out up to an experienced bodybuilding competitor. So here we go. Jenny, would you like to explain what a training training split is? Sure. Um, pick it off. Sure. Um, so a lot of times, uh, especially newbie people working out, they think of working out strength training as a full body workout. So in other words, you do squats for one move and you do a bench press for another or a shoulder press. 
Um, whereas a training split splits up the muscle groups into workouts on a specific day. So how you split that up can depend, but an example would be maybe you'd split it upper body one day and lower body another day. Or some people do push day and pull day and leg day. So these are all training splits and they're just a way to kind of target a certain muscle group versus doing the entire kit and caboodle in one workout. Yeah, and to add to that, uh, the reason you'd want to split your muscle groups up to various days, like you have chest, shoulders, triceps one day, which is your push, and back biceps another day, which is your pull, and then your legs, is you can get in greater volumes and more work to really work that muscle, break it down, create that damage so it can recover bigger and stronger. As opposed to doing a full body day, um, multiple times a week, you, you're not able to really target that muscle group and get in those volumes that are needed to really build muscle. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of great questions. So I wanna um, start with some of those questions and then flow through uh, some example training splits. And I have a really great post I wrote a long time ago on this that I'll link in the comments when we're all done. Um, but to start, uh, one of the questions we had aside from what is a training split is, uh, are training splits better than full body workouts? So that kind of segues off of what you had just mentioned. Um, and it just depends on your goals. Mm -hmm. So if you are a stay at home mom of three and you can get to the gym twice a week, full body might be the ticket for you. Okay. You can get in a good workout get in a good sweat, get toned, right? And <laughs> do that full body action. Um, but if your goals are to really build muscle, then yes, your training split is going to be superior to doing full body workouts all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add to that at all, Jenny? Um, no, I agree. And I, I do want to clarify that if you're new and you do only have time to do, you know, a two day workout and you do do a full body routine, it doesn't mean you're not getting any kind of muscular benefit from that, especially if you're new, pretty much any training, any stress you put on the muscle is going to um, result in some improvement or progress or growth. Um, it's just that there is a limit to how much of that growth can happen before you really have to add the volume. And what you mean by that is more exercises for that particular muscle group um, to cause it to continue uh, getting better. So um, for anyone who's kind of concerned, like, well, I only have two days, that's fine. You're still getting something out of it. It's just if you're hoping to really get um, a good tone or real definition in your muscles, uh, you are going to have to eventually make your way to a training split, which will probably take more days a week than two days. Yeah, I agree. Really good. So the next question we have is, does the fact that you pair your muscle groups in a day a certain way matter for your training split? So a push-pull legs combination what Jenny had mentioned before, where push is your chest, shoulders, and triceps, pull is your back biceps, and then your legs are your hamstrings, calves, quads, etc. cetera. Um, does it matter how you pair those? Can you do shoulders and back one day and chest and triceps another? Um, and in my opinion, I have written push pull legs is a great program. You can run that program. You can work muscle groups. You can do push, pull legs, high rep, and then push, pull legs, heavy all in the same week. Uh, and we'll talk about beginner to experience levels regarding those volumes in a little bit. But um, with depending on my client, if they're having shoulder issues, we might do a chest back just to work some of those uh, opposing body parts as opposed to doing chest, shoulders, triceps all in one day because it aggravates the shoulder too much. So it needs to be uh, worked a little bit less. And I really like doing a split like that with clients where we can, instead of doing chest, shoulders, triceps all in one day, we might do chest and back one day and then arms on another day. Uh, so 
it depends on your goals and it doesn't really matter as long as you're getting in those volumes that you need and the recovery period afterward. And I'd like to put in, I am a push pull leg person. Um, and the reason being when we say that, so push is any pushing motion. So pushing motion works your chest, a pushing motion works your shoulders and a pushing motion also works your triceps. So when you pair all of those together, when you're doing a bench press, for example, you, it's a compound movement. So you're not only working your chest, which is the primary mover here, but you're also working your shoulders and your triceps all in one exercise. So by doing those push movements all in one workout, your triceps are actually getting tackled the entire time because you're doing all these pushing movements, even if at the end you only have one exercise that targets the triceps specifically, that doesn't mean your triceps didn't get exercise. They did. They were, they were working the whole time. So the same is with a pull, which is any pulling motion. So for your back, you do pulling motions, but you also work your bicep in that same um, movement. So again, it's the same concept. You're pulling. It seems like you're doing a lap pull down that's working your back, but your bicep is also working in that move. So that is the reason why a push pull is kind of beneficial because you kind of get double for your money. But some people argue your triceps too fatigued by the time you actually get to an isolation movement for it. So then you're not getting as great a benefit as if you did the tricep on an opposite day. So, you know, those are all reasons why people do different training splits. That's just the reason I do them. Cause I feel like I'm getting more bang for my buck. Yeah. And that goes along with within the session. If you have, say it's a back bicep day and some people have asked before, um, should I do all three of my back exercises consecutively or can I do my back rows and then bicep curls and then go do single arm dumbbell rows for my back and then go do concentration curls for my bicep? And what I prefer is to do all those back exercises together because you're really burning out that muscle to help with that growth instead of giving it that rest and then coming back to it. Mm -hmm. Now, with that rest, you may be able to get in more repetitions or heavier weight when you come back to that next exercise. So I feel like there's a couple different theories that uh, could go into that sort of method, but I prefer for the greatest amount of pump and muscle damage is to work that muscle group all together before heading over and doing the other one. And starting with bigger muscle groups first. Mm -hmm. yes. So back to back biceps, I like to start with the back first, for example. Um, Leg day, hamstrings or quads, you're going to do your calves last mm -hmm. um, and things like that. So I prefer to work programs that way. But again, as long as you're working hard, you're going to find improvement. We can get nitpicky all night long, but really, as long as you're pushing it hard in the gym and pushing it to like, it's burning. And then you're going to go a few more or more mm -hmm. until you can barely lift that sucker. That's where the change happens. Sometimes people will start feeling a burn and then they'll stop. And when I do overreaching cycles with people where we add on an extra set and you have to lift to absolute failure until you cannot lift that weight at all, people realize they can lift twice as much repetitions or weight. So it's really interesting. Um, it's an interesting, interesting revelation for people to uh, realize that they can do so much more than just feel the burn and, oh, I'm done. You can go mm -hmm. so much further beyond that to really build that muscle. And that's how you're gonna make those gains, especially as an experienced lifter, you have to do that. Um, Cause newbies, people that are starting out new, oftentimes build muscle very easily and very quickly. So within those first couple months, it's very motivating for a new person that started lifting to see that muscle growth, but that will plateau off within the year. And then things slow down much, much more in the years to come. And you need to work your butt off to continue to build that muscle. I agree. And I do think, I mean, I know we're short on time, so I don't want to go too long in this, but um, women in particular have a difficult time pushing themselves to that very heavy weight. So any ladies out there watching, what I always tell people is, you know, the sweet spot is between eight and 12 reps. So let's say you're trying to go for 10 reps. If you are at 10, and you still have a little gas in the tank, 
or let's let's say 12, if you have 12 and you still have a little gas left in the tank, then you're probably not going heavy enough. Now, if the next level of weight up is just too heavy and you can't even pull out six, then maybe we need to increase your reps. So that way, either way, I just want you, so those last one or two reps are so hard to complete. And I just feel like women in particular don't push themselves. They don't think they're strong enough or I don't know, there's a misconception they're going to get too muscular if they if they lift too heavy. That's certainly not going to be the case. I wish it were because if that were the case, I would be rocking, but I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty, like, I'm not, yes, exactly, and I'm not, and I try so hard. But anyway, so ladies, don't worry about it. You cannot lift too heavy unless you're taking some sort of a performance enhancement. You're good to go. So just push through it. Don't underestimate your strength. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let me see here. One question I want to cover before I go into actual splits, and I'll put those on the camera so you can see examples of that and why they're generally written that way. Uh, I actually spoke with a person today as a consultation, and she's a professional triathlete. Um, she was average height, 5'6", and weighed about 117 pounds which is on a BMI chart is actually very, not very, but is underweight. Yeah. Um, but her body fat percentage per DEXA scan was 19, 18 to 19%, mm. um, which is really interesting because as an endurance athlete, right, you're in a catabolic state, um, that breakdown state when you're doing very challenging and long bouts of Type, cardio type, swimming, biking, running. So what she had asked me today, and she was, she's was she been oogling over figure competitors and looking at their programming, and she has this goal of wanting to look like a more, more like a figure competitor, but still continue to have a full-time job and train as a professional triathlete. And my information and my advice to her was, you can't be one or the other. You can try to mesh the two, but she's strength training twice a week. But for the clients that I've seen strength training twice a week, it's just not enough volumes to make those changes. You will stay fit and you will be able to maintain your muscle mass, maybe build a little over time, but twice a week just isn't it. It's not where it's at. You need at least three times a week for a normal person to make more progress. But if you really want to look like a figure competitor, you're going to be in the gym as a minimum five times a week, most likely six right? And if you're that driven, you will make time for six. So, uh, and I know at one point when I was, uh, I was coached by John Gorman, and I wanted to compete with figure and body build, or I'm sorry, and power lift. And he was like, even though they are lifting activities, right, they're both strength training activities, the program is very different. He's like, you can't do both right now. You want to do this figure show, or you want to power lift, what are you going to do? So I put power lifting on the wayside, and continued with bodybuilding. A lot of people will part pair both, but if you really want to hone in on that process and make improvements, you need to do one or the other. You know, we can't do everything. And, and this was a more extreme case with the triathlete, right? She's training so hard, fitting in one more strength training a week she was going to try and do, but um, making headway on that, on what she really wanted to look like was most likely not going to be a possibility unless she quit. And, and that's not a choice for her. She will be a triathlete and that's cool. Like, great. Keep going girl. But, um, but you got to pick one or the other sometimes and stay focused if you really want. Right. Cause a basketball, like a top athlete, Olympic um, skier or a basketball player or whatever, like they're not doing three different sports. They're doing one all the time. And that's the same case with this. That's the same deal. So I need to turn a light on here so that when I show y'all some of this stuff. Okay. The sun set so early now. Ah. All right. So let's get into what a beginner split would look like. Okay. Um, an example here. Let me pull this up on my computer. And again, I will link this post. But like we mentioned before, a really beginner lifter that's getting into it, you're probably going to do some full body or maybe upper body, lower body split, and you'll run with that for a little while. Um, 
once you have done an upper body lower body split for i don't know three to six months or so and your form is really good you're getting in shape maybe you can even run that a year if you'd like but you're probably going to want to get into honing in on each muscle group if you really want to build okay so typically a beginner bodybuilding strength training program will look something like this where you'll have a back day you'll have a chest day you'll do legs and abs on a day You'll have biceps, triceps, and shoulders on a day. And you'll kind of split them up or something like this. You might do back and bicep. You might do chest, shoulders, triceps, take a rest. You might do legs and ab and take a rest. The reason a beginner program looks like this is you need more time for your muscles to recover. Because right now you are not adapted to recover faster, okay? So it takes about two to three days as a beginner for your muscle groups to adapt to be able to come back and kill your back day again, and then your chest and your legs, okay? So you wanna give yourself a good three to four days of rest for that muscle group before you start working it again, okay? Um, so a beginner, actually, let me back up on this post, there's some good information up here. A beginner lifter is really a person that has, has been lifting under a year and uh, will usually do about three to four exercises per muscle group or so. On these days, you might do maybe five different exercises and you'll do three to four sets of those exercises. Uh, rep ranges here, like Jenny had mentioned that eight to 12 is kind of this magic number for hypertrophy. So in studies, they found that the best way to build strength is in that one to five rep range to build size is in that six to 12 rep range. And then the endurance portion where you're going 12 or more repetitions, uh, you're really working on that endurance piece, but you can build muscle here and here as well as long as you're working hard. Um, their research just shows this, but of course there's no perfect formula. So if you do an exercise for five repetitions and you push it hard, sure you're gonna build muscle. This just tends to be shown in studies to be kind of that magic number for hypertrophy. So if you're a beginner working muscle groups one time a week, I would pick three to five exercises, do three to four sets of each in that eight to 12 repetition range, and then track your progress so that you can see those changes weekly. It's very motivating. And you might say, all right, two weeks ago, I did this many repetitions at this weight. I'm going to try and do more reps, or I'm going to try and do more weight. So it becomes very motivating when you're able to track that progress. Okay, so that's a beginning bodybuilder type split to really build some sexy curves for women and then that super hot body for men. Now, intermediate lifter, hopefully you guys can see this. You're in the range of about, I don't know, two, you've been lifting for two to five years or so. And again, the, hot, the rep ranges are here and that's strength, hypertrophy, endurance. Again, you'll pick three to four, three or three to five exercises per muscle group, depending on your volumes. And you're going to do um, three to four sets per exercise, okay? So for example here, for an intermediate lifter, this is that push-pull legs routine. This is a great lifting routine. You can run for a long time. You can run this for that two to five years where um, you're going to take your pull day, back biceps, and you're gonna do it in a higher rep range, and I'll explain why we're gonna vary rep ranges, 15 to 20 rep ranges. Do your push, heavy day, six to eight rep ranges. Leg day, high rep, 15 to 20, and then you're gonna repeat the pull, push legs, but in the different rep ranges. Studies have shown that when you vary the rep ranges like this in a week, or within two weeks, or within a month, there's a 100 ways to do this that you get optimal muscle growth rather than just doing more of a linear program like the beginner split. So for beginners, this is perfect. But as you progress, you have to move on to something like this where you're varying your rep ranges. Otherwise, you're, you're going to plateau and you're not going to see many results. Okay. So within this day, what a day might look like, 
you might do for your back biceps, you might do seated cable rows for three sets in the 15 to 20 rep ranges. Then you might do single arm dumbbell rows in the 15 to 20 rep ranges for three sets. And then you might go do T-bar rows or lat pull downs for 15 to 20 repetitions for three sets. And then you'll do three bicep exercises again in the 15 to 20 rep range. Now, the longer you're lifting this, um, say you do this for two to three years, or yeah, this is um, year two and year three for you. Say on year four, you need a challenge. Well, you need to add more sets. You can do five back exercises and five bicep exercises. You're adding those volumes as you go, okay? And that will be individual based on your consistency, how hard you're working, et cetera. Jenny, would you like to add to this business as I'm rambling on? Well, um, going back to the beginner's workout, now this is just my preference when I'm working with people. But, um, and again, I'm, I'm going to refer to women just because I feel like that's the target I normally work with. And this is what I normally see. But we aren't ever taught how to lift weights. I mean, I wasn't back in high school. Maybe they're offering that these days. I don't know. But anyway, the point is, is that the first two weeks, maybe three for me, I suggest not trying to break any records or lift as heavy as you can because you literally need to train your brain to do the movement. So it, I've seen a lot of women, they get on the bench press, they have those dumbbells and it's like, whoa, you know, they're kind of all over the place. It's not even that the dumbbells are too heavy for them. It's just that their body is just not at all familiar with this movement. And so there's a lot of neuro adaptations that need to happen before you can even begin to focus on increasing that weight. So don't be surprised or concerned in the beginning if you're like, holy smokes, I, I can barely even do this squat. This feels so weird. That's okay. Learning anything, you have to practice it. And the more you do it, the more your brain gets used to it. And then you're able to start increasing that way and um, really pushing yourself. But I just want to make it clear not to be concerned there in the beginning. There is a learning curve and to give yourself that time to really develop uh, those motor skills. Um, so yeah. yeah, but when you're an intermediate, a, you don't really have to worry about that. Yeah, exactly. That's a great point. And that's where I like clients to start even with full body or the upper lower split that we talked about earlier. Um, because when they are in that phase, they'll be doing much less volumes and much lighter weights just to be able to figure out form. Mm -hmm. So that's an excellent, excellent point. Absolutely. Um, Dana has a question here. So what is the opinion of switching between free weights, machines, pulleys, etc., in your routine? So the way I like to answer this question, say you're going to do an overhead shoulder press with a dumbbell versus an overhead shoulder press on the machine. With the dumbbell, you've got to engage your core and stabilize your entire body while you're lifting that weight overhead. When you're seated on a machine, you do not have to do that. So uh, with beginners, actually, machines are a great place to start as well, just to build that strength too, so they can get in the strength. But doing free weights is very important to learn that muscle memory, just like Jenny was explaining there. But as far as going between a... Uh, uh, overhead cable press or side raises using dumbbells or cables, et cetera. It requires different, different stabilization in the muscles based on what you're pulling and different leveraging points for if you're using a pulley, um, et cetera. Do you want to add to that, Jenny? Yeah. Um, a lot of people ask me about machines versus free weights and I'm all about free weights. They have been shown to be superior as far as uh, muscle growth. And it's exactly for the reason you're saying. It's the um, the stabilization that's involved. So like you said, there's all sorts of stuff going on to keep your body controlled as you're trying to do a movement. And when you do a machine that takes that element out of it. Now where a risk can happen by doing that is it, you could totally use a machine and get stronger. 
The problem is, is you're going to get your primary mover muscles strong, but those stabilized muscle, stabilization muscles are not, they're weak. And so now if you're doing a functional movement, you're trying to pick up a box that Amazon dropped off, ah, I tweak my back. And it's because those stabilization muscles are not strong enough. So you're strong enough, your big movers are, but your little movers aren't. And so you really need to kind of... I, if you're an advanced lifter, I think switching between the machines, as long as you're doing free weights, you're fine. But for beginner lifters, I almost prefer them to do the free weights just to make sure we're strengthening the whole kit and caboodle versus getting too used to a fixed movement that a machine provides. So, but mm -hmm. that being said, if you're like me and kind of on a budget, Planet Fitness is where I work out and they have a plethora of machines. There are very few free weights. So you make do with what you can, but if there's any way you can try to incorporate some of those dumbbell movements or the fixed, um, the preloaded barbell movements instead of the Smith machine, try to do that just to kind of keep that stabilization factor involved in your lifting routines. Yeah. And even as an advanced lifter, going between a machine and free weights, it's just nice for the variation. You might get bored with overhead presses or seated back rows or whatever. Hit up a machine and hit it hard. So mm -hmm. you'll still build muscle, but definitely, definitely. So great question, Dana. Definitely adding in those free weights as your primary exercises and supplementing with other machines um, and other uh, exercises just to keep the variation different, keep you from getting bored, whatever, but you're still working those muscles and you're working them hard. I have, a, I have, a, I have something to say. Yes, do it. <laughs> Question. Um, no. So Dana yes. also asked about the pulley machine. So I just want to make sure there is a difference. Um, if I had to put things in the top down, free weights are first, but your cable machines are going to be second. So those are better than machines because the movement still is not fixed. So you are still incorporating some of those stabilization muscles. So, and it's a constant resistance on cables. So cables are really excellent as well. So just to, if I had to box them in with one or the other, I would say those are along with the free weight uh, benefits. So go ahead with those cable machines. Yeah, I agree as far as, yeah, if we prioritize them, free weights, cable machines, and then your fixed machines, like your free motion machines or what are what are other brands i can't even anyway the cybex <laughs> yeah cybex machines yeah exactly like that agreed totally agree if you are starting on your own though and you don't have someone to help you with form use those machines because you want to do this safely that's my advice there too um or if i have new clients and we're working dumbbells together if they're not comfortable with that exercise yet i'll have them use machines when they're on their own um for sure all right any other uh, anything to add before I go to advanced or experienced lifter splits? Nope, go ahead. Okay, cool. So the next one for experienced lifters are people that are generally lifting four or five years or more, where you're really honing in on what muscle groups are lagging. Do you need to bring up your shoulders so you're symmetrical with your back or your lower half? Um, and this is where you might add in muscle groups three times a week. For example, on this particular split, if someone needed to bring up their shoulders, this one has shoulders in three times per week in different rep ranges, okay? Um, and as an experienced lifter, your muscles recover, even with intermediate lifters, okay? Your muscles do recover within a few days. So unlike the beginner lifter, when you need those, you know, three to five or two to four days of recovery for that muscle group. Experienced lifters can hit those shoulders several times a week and they have recovered by the time you were, um, you know, on day five from day three. So um, experienced lifters also, you're lifting more volume. So we might add in more sets um, in a week just to get in those volumes. So you can continue building that muscle. Cause again, newbie lifters might gain like five, pounds or more muscle a month where an experienced lifter might be fighting for that five pounds within the year. So it's a very big difference when um, you've been lifting for a very long time. Muscle is a very energy expensive tissue. Your body does not want to keep it 
on if you don't need it or use it, which is why we need to strength train to keep it. So, um, and it's an adaptation and survival mechanism. You know what I mean? If you're trying to survive on the plains of mammoth land, why keep all that added tissue around? Because it, it takes more calories to eat and more calories to burn to keep that muscle mass on and functioning properly. So if you don't use it, you lose it and you need to work those volumes. Do you want to add anything to that, Jenny? No, um, that's the beauty of strength training is you, it does burn more energy. So it does allow you to eat more, <laughs> which is my favorite thing to do. Yeah, that's the, yeah that, and that is the, also the benefit. The more muscle you have, the more calories you will burn, even in a resting state. So your basal metabolic rate increases and you can definitely chow down a whole lot more. And you're burning more calories throughout the day just moving around, just doing simple things, taking a walk with your dog or, you know, picking up your toddler. So, yeah, that's definite, definite benefit of having muscle for sure. So unless there aren't any other questions, let me look over my charts here. Um, you know, and I feel like a lot of people get very confused on training programs. They don't know where to start. They don't know what's best for them or they don't know if their form is right. That's where an experienced trainer comes in. You could hire Jenny Baker here or myself. We work virtually. We work in person. Jenny's in Grand Rapids, Mich Michigan. I'm in the Twin Cities. The club I work out of is in Hudson, Wisconsin. But even to get you started for a couple months, it is worth it because if you don't train correctly with good form, you're going to cause injury down the road and then where will you be? You will not be lifting and reading your goals. You'll be getting surgery or recovering from some sort of injury for months on end because those tendons, if you, those tendons that are, that attach your muscle to your bone, um, if you start injuring or tearing those things or injure a joint, that's a long road to recovery and you need to be really careful. So I highly recommend, okay, that you take, suck it up, pay a trainer for at least a couple months to start getting your movement patterns down, understand how things work and uh, get you going on the right track just for your safety and long-term health. Cause that is so important. I agree. Totally. Yeah. Cool. All right, crew. That's it for us tonight. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Really appreciate it. Jenny, you're amazing. Thank you for joining on here um, tonight, as usual. So you'll see us on future Q&As. Go to the Get Fit, Go Figure Facebook page, which you're on now, and you can go to events, and you'll see future Q&As coming up, and I will um, be adding those in there as Jenny and I come up with topics and questions from clients, and that's kind of how we get ideas is questions from you guys. So... Um, keep those rolling in. We really appreciate it because we love putting out this information for you all as well. It's a lot of fun for us. So for sure. Thanks everybody. Yeah. Have a good night, you guys. Yep. See ya. Bye.